Hello, good morning everybody. Hopefully everybody's joined. Um, um, welcome to the webinar. Uh, initially we just um, go through the structure of how it's going to work. The first couple of minutes just do an introduction and then presentation will probably last about 20 minutes. Um, and then we'll have some questions at the end. Um, for a better experience, Please, can we get everybody to put their microphones on mute while the presentation's on? And um, you can use the chat function to send in your questions, and then we'll go through them at the end. <laughs> um, the webinar is being recorded, and the link will be sent to you. Thank you. And I hope you find this all interesting. So just be talking about combating counterfeits in the electronics supply chain. So I'll run through these slides showing some common types of counterfeiting in the industry and about how Retronic can help you reduce your risks of these counterfeit components entering your supply chain. So first off, what is a counterfeit component? Um, as you can see by the slide, different industries have different wording for defining this, but basically it's a substitute uh, unauthorized copy or a part that has been misrepresented by the supplier. For the misrepresented part, that could be, for example, a commercial part that has been remarked and been sold on as an industrial or military grade device. How to avoid counterfeit parts? Um, as you can see, it's fairly simple. You only buy direct from the manufacturer or via franchise distributors, but you know, back in the real world, we're aware this is not always an option for a lot of our customers. Um, parts become obsolete, long lead times, allocations, and this can all force purchases down non-franchise routes. Uh, you get change notices that may not be released by manufacturers, meaning that you miss out on an option for a last time buy. And bulk purchasing um, is a great way to go, but if you're not too sure at the early stage of design how well that product's going to do, then bulk purchasing is probably not an option for you. And there's also historical products that may have entered service before the current understanding of counterfeit risks. So a bulk purchase of parts would not have been made at that point. As you can see, like for aircraft, aircraft industry and military, you know, this they need supporting for up to 25 years, in some cases even longer. So basically you end up with not much choice other than having to occasionally dip your toes into the grey market and none franchised. And that's where we step in because with our wide range of services to inspect and identify the counterfeit devices. So a quick run through of the most common types of counterfeits um, and this starts with reclaimed parts. As we're all aware, a lot of scrap electronics is sent overseas for disposal. And in some cases, the PCBs are harvested for the components, for the raw material that the counterfeiters need. And as you can see, in a lot of cases, this isn't done under any kind of ESD awareness. Failing parts is another common uh, risk. These are parts that will fail at the manufacturer in their final tests. These parts should be marked for disposal um, by the manufacturer. Normally this will be done by shredding or incinerating. But in some cases, these parts can make it back into the supply chain and be sold on as functioning parts. Obviously they will appear visually perfect and they'll either fail immediately or they'll have a shortened lifespan. In some cases where the manufacturers have their incinerator or shredder offsite, they don't always make it to that building that houses those um, facilities. Failing parts. Um, yeah, blank parts are also a risk because these parts are um, they're available, obviously, a lot cheaper than the actual working parts. And these are used for the setup of uh, reflow profiles and for training purposes. So these are basically blank devices that 
look visually good, especially when the counterfeiters get hold of them and remark them. And remarking and black topping. This is a common thread in counterfeiting, no matter the source of the part. Um, parts that have been reclaimed from faulty PCBs or blank parts that will be sanded down to remove any original marking. And what they do is that during that process, they will actually collect the dust that they're sanding off of the top of the component. They'll mix that with a heat activated bonding compound. And this is then reapplied to the surface to cover the sanding marks. And then it gives the counterfeiters a new surface to apply markings to. You can see an example of one there on the right that's been half cleaned by one of our processes. So you can see how they've sanded down to remove the marks here, covered it with the new black top, and then remarked it. Um, also some other examples of this. You can see there these examples on the right. Um, you can see that this component should have a step on it that you'll see there where my mouse is. Obviously, the downside of sanding these down is that you lose that step. So you can see here that at the top of this one at the bottom, there is no step. There's still a slight visual step here. This is a red flag, a real red flag that this part has been sanded down. And again, you can see here where we've removed the corner of the remarking. And on this one, you can see traces of the actual marking underneath where they've tried to remark. Um, this is also a good indication, a quick visual indication. Um, this dappled effect, this is the tooling um, hole that the components are held by during processing. So if you see this dappled effect inside this tooling mark, then it is a good quick indication that that could well be a counterfeit part because obviously as it's held it shouldn't get filled um, cloned components is also another risk um, thankfully it's an emerging threat and it's still fairly rare because they're, they're very expensive for the counterfeiters to create as they have to actually create their own devices including their own silicon so obviously cost wise, this inhibits them quite dramatically. Um, the threat from the clone parts is that spyware and malware can be embedded into the devices. Um, they'll function normally and they will be very, very difficult to identify as a counterfeit visually. Um, and at this point, no third party test house would be able to say that they could identify these parts. And we certainly wouldn't say that we could. Um, this would only be noticeable uh, with the embedded software would only be noticeable to the manufacturer. Like I say, thankfully, it's very rare. So just run through some of the services that we offer to um, assist for counterfeit detection. We've got visual inspection, uh, the heated dinosaur testing, um, X-ray inspection, XRF testing, flash memory testing, curve trace, uh, key function, and decapsulation. And there's also some use for the soldability test in this as well, and also extreme temperature testing, which we'll come on to later. So just run through those, <coughs> sorry, just run through those in more detail. And we'll start with visual inspection. Visual inspection, um, we'll start with the inspection of the packaging itself. The label on the outer packing can sometimes highlight a suspicious part, as there may well be spelling mistakes or a difference in the manufacturer's logo or ink bleed. Um, and then once the parts are unpacked, they'll be inspected in detail to check for the correct markings, country of origin, date codes, signs of black topping. Uh, contamination, lead defects, and the phys physical dimensions will also be measured. Obviously, if you're sanding down a part, then you are affecting that physical dimension. Uh, black topping. Um, 
So this permanency marking um, will check whether the part has been black topped. So it's a heated solvent soak test that we use to do that. And um, once the remarked has been removed, you can see the real marking underneath, which obviously gives you the indication that it's not authentic. X-ray is um, it's probably one of our most powerful tools for any counterfeit check, to be honest. This allows us to check the components internally to see if the die and bonds are in place and intact. As you can see from these images on the left, um, these were tubes of through-hole ICs. And you can see there's a blank device um, here. Uh, there's different die types in there. So, I mean, visually, these parts came across as perfect. Um, and these, actually, these devices were destined for a very critical application as well. So this was actually discovered. This wouldn't have been discovered visually without x-ray. This may well have made it into the um, made it onto the board and then delayed things with rework and uh, fault finding. Um, it's not always surface mount parts as either. I mean, as you can see with this one here, but this was quite an interesting case of a diode, a very expensive diode that was sold to one of our customers as brand new, but it was reclaimed and it was very cleverly cut and lap soldered using high melting point solder. Um, our customer actually spotted this when forming the components to go in the board. Some of the legs were snapping away. So they sent some samples to us. We did some x-rays and found this clear area where it's actually had, it's obviously been removed from a board and it's had a leg reattached to make it look like it's a new part. Um, these are top-down x-ray images of reels. So we just put some reels into the x-ray that some customer had had free issue to them for a job. And just quickly on free issue, free issue tends to be where you find a lot of the counterfeit parts. From my background, I was 14 years at a CEM um, and when you tell the customer that the parts they require are on 25 weeks lead time, sometimes they'll say, oh, we'll find them ourselves and we'll free issue them. And you've got no control then of where they're buying these parts from. And that's how these came to us. You can see blank parts, um, broken bonds, clearly different uh, die and bond out patterns as well. And again, this was a life critical device that these were destined for. Um, this one's just an example that we don't have to just identify the counterfeit parts um, as components alone. This is an x-ray of two boards. A uh, customer found issues with some of their batch was failing. They identified it to this component on their flying probe test and we did some x-rays and you can see visually identical. Um, but through the x-ray you can see there's absolutely no bonds in this one at all. So it's showed up as an open on their um, flying probe test. XRF testing. Um, this allows us to use a non-destructive test to identify the metal composition on devices. It's a useful tool to determine if a part is reclaimed as traces of um, different types of solder would be identified on the legs um, and, or the pads. It's also a tool that we're starting to utilize more and more for counterfeit fixings as well. Um, screws, washers, bolts. You know, this is especially a risk for industries like aerospace where the metal composition of fixings is crucial. So we can check these against what should be expected. Um, memory programming tests, they can help us with a memory device. In some cases, uh, well, as you can see on this here, this part was actually marked up as a 16 gigabyte part. But after we ran memory test on it, we actually found that it was an eight gigabyte device. So again, visually perfect, said it was a 16 gig. Um, but without the memory program test, 
that would have actually made it onto the PCBs. Wait, John. Um, curve trace test is also a very useful tool for to help us check the parameters of the device against the data sheet. This can identify if the counterfeit part, if it's a counterfeit part, as well as the fact that it may have been damaged um, during removal with overheat um, and ESD damage. Key function test. It's this allows us to take things further than our curve trace test. Um, the curve trace test tests against the data sheet parameters. The key function test will actually allow us to set up a test circuit for the individual part. This is useful on parts that um, curve trace testing is not suitable for. And the final stage that we tend to take things through, obviously a destructive stage, this is decapsulation. Um, this will, we remove basically the covering from the device so that we can visually see inside to see the dye and the bonds. Obviously in some cases in the decapsulation, the bonds obviously do get damaged, but we can visually then inspect the markings inside the device and we can tell you whether they match up against the markings on the outside of the component, or what you believe the component to be. Um, extreme temperature testing, as I talked about earlier, this is um, a useful tool when we suspect a commercial part may have been remarked to appear to be a military or industrial grade device. This kind of device it will pass our x-ray tests and our curve trace testing as functionally they will look and they'll work to the same parameters. But if we then test them to the um, temperature rating of the industrial and military device, then a commercial part will fall out at that point. So this helps identify when you get commercial parts remarked. Obviously the commercial parts tend to be the cheaper parts. So you get the counterfeiters that will get hold of the commercial part and they will remark them as industrial or military grade. Um, this is a common question that we get asked. Um, what steps do we take when we find parts of counterfeit? So we'll supply a report to the customer to indicate the parts have failed. We'll come with images um, and a full report. Uh, we log the information on counterfeit reporting websites such as um, ERAI. Uh, we will return the parts to the customer, but we will destroy them if uh, requested. Um, I've had this raised previously when going through these slides at presentations that some people are of the opinion that we shouldn't return the parts um, because in an ideal world, if you find a counterfeit, the first thing you do is destroy it so it doesn't make its way back into the supply chain. But from our point of view, we're legally required to return the parts because there's there's no infringement by mere possession of the counterfeit items. The infringement takes place if you trade those parts. Um, so they're not the property of Retronics. So we have to return them to our customer and the customer will need them back to be able to reclaim costs from where they purchase them from as well. But like I say, we can, if we're requested, we can destroy the parts on site. So in summary, we act as an independent test house. So obviously we're seeing an awful lot of different components from different industries, different component types. And we feel that there has been recent improvements in the industry and customers purchasing controls, which has led to a drop of the amount of counterfeit devices that we do see. Um, I mean, the supply chain is getting smarter um, with non-franchise distributors do partner with independent test houses such as us. Um, there's an awful lot of education out there now with um, anti-counterfeiting forums um, and other anti-counterfeiting events which are helping to increase people's awareness. And the legislation is getting tighter as well. There's been some recent cases of prison sentencing now being enforced by the US government. Um, obviously the US government are pushing for that with parts um, at risk of getting onto military aircraft, etc. I believe there is a case in the past that where there was 
counterfeit parts found on Air Force One um, quite a few years ago now. So I'm sure a lot of you already know us. We do offer a wide range of services to the industry, aside from the counterfeit checking, from alloy conversion. And alloy conversion as well can be a useful way of avoiding counterfeit devices if the part you're looking to source has to be leaded. And this version is only available through non-franchise, but the lead-free version is available via franchise. Then you could buy it via franchise. We can take that part the lead-free part and convert it to leaded or vice versa. The component reclaim service is also a useful tool against counterfeiting. We can safely recover and test parts from known good parts from any failing PCBs that you may have. And it's a safer route than having to dip your toe into the grey market as you know the history of that part, you, you purchased them originally. Um, this is just a selection of our other services. Um, we're a customer-led company, so new services are being added all the time uh, to fit in with our customer needs. Um, so thank you very much for your time. And we'll, um, we'll take a look now to see if there are any questions that need to be answered. Feel free to email me and I'll do my best to get an answer back to you. Or if you require any more information on the service, then just drop me an email. That's fine. So thank you very much for all joining. Have a good day.